So the probability for, for that volume, divided by that volume, is the density, the probability density. So to find the probability, the total probability being 1, uh, uh, here's your probability density uh, divide, uh, sorry, multiplied by the volume. Well, I mean, <laughs> now we have to integrate it. Uh, it's not as simple as that. So uh, let's and let's um, the probability density is a function of the radius. That's all. Uh, we're, we're talking uh, a spherically symmetric um, probability density. So uh, imagine this this sphere now is like. Uh, layer after layer of, uh, let's say, um, like an onion, like layers of an onion. And so uh, to find the probability that the particle is in that layer, that un onion layer of the sphere, this spherical uh, onion layer, uh, will be uh, the probability density times the volume of that layer. Now, what is, what is the volume? Well, it's the surface area of, of, the, of a sphere, of radius r, the surface area, times the, the width of the onion layer, which, which we'll call delta r. Right? So the, the, the area, so that's 4 pi r squared. Right? That's the formula for the surface area of a sphere. So to find the volume of that uh, onion layer, will be the surface area, 4 pi r squared, times its thickness, uh, del you know, dr, delta r. So uh, 4 pi r squared delta r. And then you sum it all, but that's just an integral. Okay? And that, that's, the, that's the probability density at, at r. And you integrate the whole thing over, uh, well, from r from 0 to infinity. And the probability that the particles in that infinite sphere is 1, okay? and that allows you to calculate what this constant here is, and it works out to be 1 over square root of pi a0 cubed, where a0 is defined to be this constant here, alright, so um, it's just, you're know, just tidying things up a little bit, and you, you're, you, you get, you get, uh, this is, this is what your um, wave ground state looks like. Now rho, uh, I don't know what it was, but uh, you're wondering where this 1 over a naught comes from, one, o 1 over all this. Well it comes from your, it comes from your rho. Uh, you might have to look here just quickly, what is, what is rho? Rho is alpha r, and alpha squared is minus 8me, that's your, the actual energy divided by h bar squared. Okay. All right, well, you end up something like this. Uh, I should say, I didn't do it, but I should say hw, right? Any sort of result like that that's a bit tedious and not too difficult, uh, I ask you to do it yourself. So uh, calculate this and show that the eigens, the uh, ground state energy is, is this, this form. Do that, do that for homework, all right? Okay. So uh, if you know if you know the ground state here, you you can from it calculate the probability density. Just square it, and then plot plot that probability density as a function of uh, r, your your radius, and the curve. If you look at if you look at if you look at this, and you square it, and then you can get a computer to to print out the value of it uh, as a function of r. Uh, you get you get something like this. Okay, uh, now the probability density PD PD is maximum here. You can just see that visually, and that's when uh, the R the radius is a naught. That's 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 this a naught here. Okay, now that particular radius is usually called the bore, uh, as from uh, Niels Bohr B O H R, usually called the the bore radius. Okay. Now, uh, so that's the, the most, pro it's most probably, the electron is most probably at, at the distance A0 uh, from the nucleus. That's, that's how you interpret it. Now, what's, what about the average, uh, well, I'm going to be careful what I've just said. That, that, that's, that's, 
that's the point of maximum uh, probability density. Now the average, on average, where is it? Uh, so to calculate the average, now remember these angular brackets now in, in physics? Uh, if you see that in quantum mechanics, it's asking you to find the expectation value, which is just a technical word in physics. It just means the average value. Right? So to find, you know, this bit of revision, to find the average value of anything, you know, if this, this R here is the anything in this case, you, uh, you just integrate the anything, whatever it is, in this case it's R here, by, uh, you, you integrate that quantity by the probability density. So, uh, so again, uh, you know that that uh, the multiple layers of the onion of, of uh, spherical space. So again, uh, four pi r squared is the surface area of of one layer of the onion, uh, and its thickness is dr. So the surface area times the thickness gives you a volume, a volume of the layer, the volume of the onion layer, if you like. So 4, 4 pi r squared uh, dr. So, and uh, here's your probability density, and the r here is what you're average. You're trying to find the average of, right here. Okay. So, uh, you know, you know, you naught. That's the eigenstate, you know, the state of lowest energy, and it's here. This this term here. So plug it in, plug it in here, square it, and then calculate this integral. And uh, you'll get, uh, well, you're integrating this, in fact, and you'll get that result. And again, do it for homework, right? I, I, <laughs> you probably notice I'm stepping up the, the homework uh, load on you, right? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you've been following me this far, uh, if, if, you, if you're not hit on this particular lecture by chance, but if you've been following me consistently and you're, you're, you're a student, you're really studying this stuff, then um, you know all these homeworks. Uh, they aid the learning process, right? Uh, you, and and motivate it. So uh, and they help the understanding. Okay. All right. Now uh, now have a look. Have a have a look at this probability distribution. It goes from nothing. Effect goes from nothing right up. You. Know, I mean, it may become hugely small, but you know, infinitely small. Uh, you know, this, this 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 curve here approaches the this the r axis, so so the, the value here uh, gets you know, really small, but uh, effectively the uh, the electron can also I mean it can be very far away from the nucleus, but it, it can also be at zero. I mean this starts here at zero. It can also be at zero distance from the nucleus, and you, that may surprise you a little bit. Um, so. So you, for, if you have a large nucleus, uh, like uranium or something, uh, that, that has 92, 92 protons, and uh, well, I don't know how many neutrons, but um, uh, let's see, the atomic bomb was taking uh, raw uranium with uh, the number of protons plus number of neutrons at 238 and converting that to uh, 235 and you needed you needed uh, uranium 235 so called uh, you had to remove three neutrons I guess for each nucleus uh, to uh, to make a bomb so uh, the atomic well actually nuclear bomb atomic bomb is sort of stupid I mean that's just dynamite right? it's a it's about the nucleus it's the nuclear bomb all right so uh, take a large, a large um, uh, uranium nucleus uh, with you know, lots of neutrons and protons. It's uh, it's definitely not a point, but right? it has a definite uh, size, and uh, it it can happen that the electron is actually uh, located in a sense uh, within the nucleus, right? Because the the radius of the nucleus is, is not not zero; you know, it has a certain amount. So it is possible that the electron actually uh, you know, is in in the nucleus, and it, uh, and if it's there, it can interact perhaps with uh, the the neutrons and protons to uh, to con to convert them because the, the the electron has a charge, right? So sometimes sometimes 
Uh, this is called K capture, uh, capture of the electron. The electron gets captured, in a sense, in the nucleus. And why K? Well, it's that ten things tends to happen with the innermost uh, electrons, of course, the, the lowest level energy levels, and the other ones are excited levels. And the electrons uh, at the lowest level are, are called uh, at the K level, letter K, and the next higher level is L, and the next M, and N, and so on. So K capture is sort of short for the capture of an electron from the K kth layer. Okay? Now when that happens, uh, the electron there with its negative charge might interact with a proton uh, positively charged, and that resulting in the creation of a, a neutron, which is neutrally charged, a little zero there, uh, you know, zero charge. Okay? So a positive charge plus a negative charge, the charges cancel, and you're left with a particle of uh, zero charge, neutral charge, like a neutron. Well, that means if, if that happens, you're converting a proton, more or less, because the, the, mass, the mass of the electron is very small. It's about a, a thousandth of the mass of a proton or a neutron. I think that's right. Okay. But anyway, huge, hugely smaller. So most of the mass of uh, your neutron comes from the proton, but, but the electron does have the same charge, same quantity of charge as the proton. So, uh, so in effect, uh, this changes your, uh, your nucleus. So what, before we had a proton, now we've got a neutron, and we're getting into a bit of particle physics here, so I'll definitely be teaching courses on particle physics all the way up, uh, five levels uh, on particle physics, undergrad even, uh, masters one, two, PhD one, two. Uh, particle physics really important to physics, of course. Okay, so um, now what that means is that your nucleus now has one less proton, and uh, that that determines the you know, number of protons in a nucleus. I heard it. Ping, it uh, worried me, but it seems okay. So uh, the number of protons in a nucleus determines the nature of the atom. You know, what kind? What what element is it? Uh, each element, you know, uh, in nature, naturally occurring, we we have 92 elements in in the chemical table, and each element um, is specified, identified by the number of protons that that it has in its nucleus.